Hello, I'm Alan Pamphalon from Chelmsford Civic Society. We're in Chelmsford today and we have a number of blue plaques in Chelmsford. Now these are significant markers for people that have contributed to human welfare and happiness within the city. They also have an exceptional impact in, the field, in their field and they are really linked quite closely with the community and society at large. Now these people uh, would have lived within uh, the area and are associated with a, a building um, such as the one we are standing next to, Shire Hall. But uh, there is more than that. They have to really have been uh, deceased for 20 years um, and they must have really contributed to the overall uh, good feeling of the area and also society at large. Since 2013, the Chelmsford Civic Society has been providing help with proposing new blue plaques for the City Council. Their first joint venture was the blue plaque for Dr Benjamin Pugh, who saved many local lives through his work in Chelmsford. The City Council scheme has been running since 1986 and now has 38 blue plaques in place, nine of which were with the Chelmsford Civic Society's assistance. We're standing in front of Shire Hall and this building has the blue plaque on it from John Johnson up there on the wall. John Johnson designed this building. He was in his time a fantastic designer. One of his early products was the stone bridge designed by a select team which included George Ray the stonemason. They arranged for the Portland stone to be brought all the way up from the south coast to, for to build that structure. But this was a much bigger project and this was the one that really made the team, put the team really on the map. They designed not only the neoclassical frontage but also the balustrades made of code stone and also the friezes as well. Mercy, justice and hope. All of those three were designed by John Braken but were made possible by Code Stone. Code Stone design made by George Code in 1769 in London. And the key thing with, with Code Stone was to really fuse the, the mixture together which included terracotta, glass and silicon. So we have Shire Hall here it's a fantastic building and John Johnson was faced when he was building it with only a 10 feet clearance between the original hall, the original courthouse that stood in the middle of the high street. But they did it and he, he delivered on time and it was awarded handsomely for making it such a good piece of architecture, which we still enjoy today. Right. We've moved locations and we're now standing in front of a different blue plaque. This one was actually not funded by Chelmsford City Council, but by Chelmsford Civic Society. Therefore, it is a different style. It's bigger. It has more words on it. It actually has two quotations on it, but it also has a picture of the man himself. Now, this whole idea was a way that the Civic Society and Pam Swaby could achieve an ambition to have a tribute to the great man right in the centre of Chelmsford. And that not only really emphasises how important he was, but also how important all those people that worked for the Marconi company and all the subsidiaries were to the welfare of Chelmsford. We've now moved locations again, and this time we're actually standing on the Marconi original wireless factory site. The man that made this possible is Godfrey Isaacs. Mr. Marconi gave him full responsibility when he took over as managing director of the Hall Street factory in 1910. He realized the company needed to expand and the way they were going to expand was to go from a 4,000 square feet site to a 70,000 square feet site. 
And this was Godfrey Isaac's vision. It took 17 weeks for the, for the actual site to be built, the initial site, and they moved in over a weekend. Godfrey Isaacs then remained manager director for a large number of years. Eventually, he became involved with the idea of the British Broadcasting Company. And it was Godfrey Isaacs that came up with the idea of the license fee. The license fee that we still pay today is down to this famous man. But he did not live that long. He was a workaholic and he died very soon after that meeting. But had he have survived and had he have carried on his great work, he would have probably today be known as the father of the BBC. We've mentioned all these men, but we haven't mentioned the ladies. So Chelmsford has blue plaques to ladies, and one of the most famous ones is Winifred Sayer. Winifred Sayer came to Chelmsford, was living in Chelmsford, was an amateur opera singer working at the Hoffman Ball Bearing Company, and she was asked by the engineers at the Marconi site to do some singing to test out some new equipment. This new equipment was very experimental. The idea was not to broadcast Morse code, but to broadcast her voice. And being an amateur soprano, she had the right voice to be able to do that. And so in the spring of 1920, she came here and for three nights, 10 shillings a night she was paid, she did that work. Winifred is not really known that well because soon after that equipment was used by Dame Nellie Melba and she became the famous lady. But Winifred has the accolade of being Britain's first paid radio artist. This is a very quiet road and you would normally associate blue plaques to be on buildings that were quite big and elaborate. But some of the best blue plaques are in small houses like these ones down this road. This is Henry Road in Chelmsford. And down there at number 22, just where the bushes are, is actually the res residence of Noel Asbridge, later in 1935 to become Sir Noel Asbridge. And he lived here from 1921 to 1923. Now, he was a great innovator in the idea of airborne radar. And so he really was working with his uh, colleagues out at Rittle. And he would have cycled from here to Rittle. And they were invited to do something different. They were invited to do radio telephony on a regular basis. This was when regular radio broadcasts as we know them today weren't existing. This was a real step in, in a different direction. Captain Peter Pembleton Legacy led the, led the team, but Noel Asbridge was the first person to actually step up to the microphone on the 14th of February 1922 and make that broadcast. And he carried on being involved in those broadcasts for the next nine months. Eventually, they became part of the BBC, the technical department of the BBC. Eckersley became the chief engineer and Asbridge the assistant engineer. And then when, then when Eckersley left, Asbridge became the chief engineer of the BBC and later became the director general. He led the BBC through World War II. And really, it's a, it's a tribute to a man like that that we can actually identify him back to Chelmsford because he's now internationally known. The blue plaques in Chelmsford are just one way that we actually recognise people. We're on the Anglia Ruskin University site and here we can see both a Marconi building and just down there is a Tyndall's, Tyndall building. This is the way that we recognise people and it really is nice to have this extra piece of recognition. But there are over 50 blue plaques in Chelmsford and we've just covered a few of them in this video today. But the whole list is now going to be published on the Chelmsford Civic Society website in the very near future. And that will allow us then to see all of them.
there is nowhere else where all of those plaques actually appear together. And they're not only blue, there's also brown, there's also various other colours as well. Hopefully today you've been able to get a small sample of what a blue plaque is and how you go about getting one. But there are many more still in the pipeline. Watch this space.